Hey guys, it's History Behind the Warrior, and welcome to yet another Mortal Kombat video. Now, in today's video, I wanted to explore the idea and possibility of what if Onaga never died in the first age of the Mortal Kombat series. I did one of these a year or so ago with Shao Kahn, and what would have happened if he conquered Earthrealm in MK3? Now, I can't deny that with the Marvel What If series around the corner, it kind of rekindled my interest of what is possible if you change one key component and factor in the universe. That is what has led me to today's video. Before we proceed, let's have a bit of a reintroduction to Onaga's background, his death, and what happens if we change it. Now, Onaga was born in the first age of Outworld. This was an era of Mortal Kombat, where the realms were still open and for the taking, with life still flourishing and forming from the defeat of the One Being. The weak would die and the strong would survive. One of these beings that survived was, of course, the Great Onaga. What made him so great? Well, in the grand scheme of things, Onaga is a very unique and divine being in the universe. Being born as a dragon, he's held up in extremely high regard, as dragons are seen as the universal symbol across the realms, as divine messengers of the gods. So, as expected, the Dragon King would embrace his divine traits and use them to his advantage. Specializing in necromancy as well as hand-to-hand -hand combat, Onaga was nigh unstoppable. He created an undead army at his fingertips to usher in a new era to Outworld. His powers were so incredibly strong that he was acknowledged by the gods and elder gods alike, with even Outworld's protector Shao Kahn acting as his assistant and right-hand man. Now, while somewhat unstoppable, there was one enemy that Onaga could not defeat, time itself. Thus, because of this, in Onaga's later years of ruling Outworld, he went on a quest that ravaged the realms to acquire a dragon egg. Onaga believed that by bathing in the blood of an infant dragon, he could achieve immortality and no longer age, allowing him to rule for an eternity. But tragically, this wasn't meant to be, as he would be poisoned by his right-hand man, killing the Dragon King and sending him into a deep slumber. Now, of course, this wouldn't quite be the end of Onaga, as he would later return in Deception via the assistance of Reptile. Unfortunately, this was very, very short, as he would be defeated by Shujenko and later become a background villain for Armageddon. So, with this quick recap out of the way, what would have happened if he didn't die? Well, for us to understand this, I will be using my own knowledge of the Mortal Kombat series, as well as the roadmap of the original timeline, to plan out how this would unfold fold, and I will also be explaining the bigger players in this story and how they become a factor in the greater narrative. Now, first things first, why would Shao poison Onaga? Well, outside of the obvious of obtaining his empire, Shao at the time had fallen under the influence of the One Being, the creature that makes up all of the realms. Now, the One Being is hellbent on uniting the realms back together, therefore allowing him to return. Now that we are adding this to the story, it does in fact make more sense as to why Shao would do this and becomes who he is. But I do actually think there's more to it than that. I believe that the One Being was actually scared of what Onaga could become upon obtaining this immortality. You see, in his first life, Onaga was one of the very, very few beings that could avoid the influence of the One Being, and thus, I believe that the One Being would kill him off in order to prevent a deity this powerful to possibly become an obstacle later on. Of course, there is a sense of irony to this, as he would later fall under the influence of the One Being, but this was strictly after Shao had failed and Onaga had been brought back from the dead, seemingly making him more susceptible to the One Being's influence. Now, with that said, let's spin this into the narrative and how I believe this story would unfold. With Shao unsuccessful in his attempt to poison Onaga, I believe the two would continue to go on, with Onaga unbeknownst to the fact that 
his right man is attempting to kill him because, well, it's an assassination attempt. You gotta keep it under wraps. But I believe that after a period of time, Onaga would learn of his betrayal through two different ways. One is that he would catch Shao Kahn in the act, or two, which seems actually more than likely, is that Shao would confront him directly in one-on-one -on -one combat, as this would be a desperate attempt after failing numerous times. And, well, we know how boastful Shao is. With that said, however, Shao would would most certainly perish in this fight. You see, Shao originally wanted to poison Onaga to prevent a direct confrontation against the Dragon King. If we remove this variable from the equation and Shao becomes desperate, he's then forced to take him on in more of a direct approach, to which he would most certainly die. Whilst I am acknowledging that Shao apparently killed Onaga in Armageddon, these are two different versions of Shao Kahn. Shao became strong stronger with every single realm he merged with his own. I mean, Mortal Kombat would only ever be created due to Shao's desire for conquest, and thus the one being's desire to unite his own being. So with this said, Shao at this moment in time is definitely weaker than Onaga. So I think because of this, Shao would actually die. And by me actually killing off Shao, it completely changes the entire landscape of the Mortal Kombat series, with Shao not rising to power, the Mortal Kombat tournament never being created, Edenia is left untouched, the realm of the vampires survives, and the home of the Saurian thrives. Along with this, Armageddon is never created due to the lack of the Mortal Kombat tournament. Shao's demise would usher in a completely new era for the series. So, with Onaga left in control of Outworld, he's able to grow his empire and taste the fruits of his labour as he would be successful in bathing in the blood of the infant dragon and obtain the immortality he had been yearning for. So this is actually a really big win for Onaga, as not only is he successful in obtaining his goals, but he does actually beat the One Being here. But this doesn't quite until the end of the One Being, as I will be bringing him back into the narrative later on. Now, one thing to point out about Onaga here is that he never actually desired power. What we got in Deception, where he wished to acquire the Kami Dogus was of course a clear sign of the influence of the One Being. But with this no longer being a factor, what becomes of the Dragon King? Well, I believe that he would simply continue to go on to reign Outworld, with no desire or wish to be granted upon achieving his own ambitions. He would continue to expand his empire, but it most certainly wouldn't be all sunshine and rainbow. Whilst the events of Mortal Kombat 1 to 3 would be averted, Shinnok would most certainly still attempt to follow through on the events of MK4, launching a full-scale assault across the realm. Now, whilst this may not happen in the same time period as 4, as Shinnok purposely attacked after Shao was weakened, in the original Mortal Kombat 4, Shinnok attacks all of the realms at the same time, opposing to just going for the Jinsei like MKX. Now, while Shinnok and his Brotherhood of Shadow are a formidable force, I do not believe that they would stand a chance against Onaga and his immortal army. The reason why Onaga's army is held up in such high esteem is due to his uncanny talent in necromancy. With the ability to resurrect every fallen soldier on the battlefield upon their death, it is nigh unstoppable to stop Onaga once he starts attacking. And because of this, I believe it would ultimately lead to both the defeat and slaughter of Shinnok at the hands of Onaga. Whilst victorious, I do think that this would paint a target on his back by both mortals and gods. Murdering an elder god is no easy feat, and I believe that if he were to do this, it would gain the attention of the One Being once more. Now, with the Mortal Kombat tournament not in place, it would mean that wars amongst the realms is most certainly possible. The merge, if anything, would be much easier. But who would I dare say would become the One Being's next vessel? Well, honestly, it's it's quite hard to say, but if I were to narrow things down, I would say that Raiden is most certainly one of the contenders here, as we've seen that Shao, who was a god, is a deity that can be influenced 
influenced by it. I think with the lack of a Mortal Kombat tournament, Raiden himself would actually lack some firepower. Another contender could possibly be Goro, as he was originally planned to become the vessel for him back in the Mortal Kombat X comic book series. And well, Goro does have the Shokan army at his fingertips, but I think that the most likely option, and I know this might be coming a little bit out of left field here, is Hotaru. You see, Hotaru is from the Order Realm, and the Order Realm residents, the Sidons, believe in the purest form of order. They do things by the book and punish people harshly if they do not follow things by the rules and laws in extreme ways. This ideology goes so far that back in Deception, Hotaru in fact served the Dragon King because he believed that his idea of merging the realms was the right way to create order and harmony. Whilst Raiden and Goro are undoubtedly strong contenders, why control just one person when you can influence an entire realm that share that same mindset and ideology of order by merging them all together. It's complete control. And it's worth pointing out here that the Sidons aren't restricted to just governing their own realm. We have seen them overstretch their rule into Outworld in the conquest mode of Mortal Kombat Deception. Now with this said, if the Order Realm of Sido was supposed to go up against Onaga and his immortal Dragon King army, how exactly do they stack up? Well, I believe that whilst the Order Realm may put up a strong fight against Onaga, his empire would ultimately be too much for the Order Realm to handle, and thus they would all die. Yep, every single one of them. Because remember, abandoning your post would be seen as treason, and due to their strict ideology and somewhat religion, they could not turn away. So the Dragon King would once again be victorious in defeating the One Being. Or is he? Well, he is is where I see the story going one of two ways. And it's actually a very interesting twist on this somewhat narrative. So ending A, Onaga goes on to live in peace as a beacon of power in Outworld till the very end of time itself. As well, he'd still be able to go toe to toe against whatever champion the one being would place before him. Now the second ending is actually a very interesting spanner in the works and in the somewhat nature of Mortal Kombat's writing is one that feels more in line with the story of the universe. Upon the destruction of the Sidons, Onaga looks to expand his empire beyond Outworld, as it simply become too large. This in turn could lead to him obtaining the realm of Sido and unknowingly play into the hand of the very beast he was avoiding this entire time. Remember, the One Being is still seen as a myth amongst mortals, and the truth is hidden by the Elder Gods, so Onaga would not know any better. Now, this idea and plan could shortly follow from realm to realm, with the One Being choosing a new champion every time and hanging out bait so Onaga has to fight back every time until he unites all of the realms or a tournament of sorts is created in order to halt such a merge. How this would pan out however is anyone's guess but the one being is an inevitable force in the Mortal Kombat universe. One that lives through others with them not even knowing if it's their own actions. But for now this is it for what if Onaga never died. I hope you enjoyed this one and had fun by watching it. From what you can tell, I had to put a lot of thought into the script and take into account my vast knowledge of the universe. So I hope to you all this feels like a somewhat accurate and satisfying outcome to this story. I wanted to encompass the values and narrative of the original timeline in this story, as this is where he comes from. This is what I wanted to focus on story-wise, as it adds a real sense of cohesion and somewhat respect to the source material. By me undoing the death of Onaga, I basically spinned the series on its head, and honestly, I had no idea whilst making this video the butterfly effect that would happen by me actually killing off Shao Kahn. So with that said, I hope you found this quite fun to explore. And if you want more of these, while I explore these different what-if scenarios in the Mortal Kombat universe, please give this video a thumbs up and put some suggestions down in the description below, because I'm sure there's plenty of scenarios that many of you would like to see me explore. Now with that said, I most certainly couldn't get to every single character here. The universe is simply so so vast. But regardless, I do hope you enjoyed this one guys. It was a pleasure to put together.
together. But until then, that has been it for me. So if possible, guys, before this video wraps up, once again, let's give it a thumbs up. And please do not forget to subscribe and tick that bell as it will keep you up to date with all of my videos. But until the next one, please comment, like, subscribe and share this video with everyone you know. Please take care and I will see you all next time.